Hey guys, what's going on? So in the long overdue video today, I'm going to be doing an update review on this amazing backpack right here. This amazing one-of-a-kind backpack that I got three years ago. I actually looked it up on Etsy. And yes, this bag is officially as of February 2018. So as of February this year, it turned three. Yes, I actually did a two-year update video and I was not satisfied with how it came out. Um, I didn't do it justice. I still might not do this bag justice, but I want to make sure that I'm that I'm getting it right because this bag has been like my companion over the past few years. I've taken it around basically every day. I take it on trips. I take it to work. I don't go easy on it. I haven't treated it once. I actually leave it in my trunk most of the time. So throughout the winter, you know, when it gets to be negative 20 degrees outside, it's still sitting in my trunk, you know, in the freezing cold. I have not gone easy on this bag whatsoever. It just keeps looking better and better as time goes on. I got this from a shop on Etsy called USA Handcraft Leather. And unfortunately, the shop closed down and they didn't have a website and they don't have any other points of contact. So I don't know what ever became of that shop. And it's unfortunate because at the time I was scouring the internet. I mean, looking everywhere for somebody who could make me a bag out of Horween leather. Specifically, I was looking for a Chrome XL bag. Um, this bag is made of both Horween's brown Chrome XL as well as tan Essex leather. The Essex is this outer pocket here, as well as there's other components made of Essex, such as the bottom. The bottom is Essex. The, the strap system, I should say, is also Essex. So needless to say, I was very disappointed when I couldn't find USA Handcraft leather anymore. If anybody knows whatever became of that shop, I would love if you could <laughs> let me know in the comments below. Horween leather is used in wallets and, and in boots everywhere. But when it comes to leather bags, for me, there, there wasn't really too good of a selection out there. There are some good leather bag makers out there, such as this Saddleback Leather Company. They make some decent bags. I don't know what leathers they use. It's almost $600. It says, the leather of this backpack is the strongest and most water resistant we can find. It's full grain leather, and then we line it with pig skin, which is stronger than the cow skin. It's rare for a low quality company to use full grain to make a leather backpack because it's so expensive. When I say full grain leather, I mean that it still has all of the tough, tightly woven fibers on top of the hide. Most companies shave off the scars and blemishes from the top of the article and shave off the strongest and best part of the hide, the grain, while doing it. They call it the hiking through the Panamanian jungle leather backpack bedtime story. Yeah. So they don't say where they source the leather from. And that's as a leather nerd, that's what I like to know. And so, yeah, if anybody knows where they source that leather from, I'd, I'd be very interested because I do like the look of those bags. That it, They're a good design. My personal experiences with this one, I really, really enjoyed the fact that she made this backpack out of all Horween leather, not to mention like this, this strap system back here reminds me of some of the shoulder harnesses that are used for cameras and guns and things like that. Phil from Ashland Leather turned me on to the Galco holsters, which are very nice, which are reminiscent of this shoulder strap system that it has going on here. These tan pieces of leather are all Essex. And as you can see, so there's like this center piece of Essex stitched here as sort of the anchor. And then anchoring both straps together is this piece of brass and then coming off that we have the two straps and then there's multiple rivets throughout here holding the straps on together and then for added support we have this handle here that you can hang the bag by or you can hand carry it which I often find myself doing especially if I'm wearing like a leather jacket I actually have a hard time getting these straps around the leather jacket mostly due to the fact that the leather jacket is not my leather jackets aren't very flexible yet. <laughs> like the, the leather is so thick and I don't have full range flexibility in them. So I actually have a hard time keeping this backpack on when I have a leather jacket on. And so what I'll do is I'll just hand carry it from, from here. And as you can see, this, this area is supported by a rivet here, a rivet here, so two rivets. And then this little sling here that connects it to the shoulder strap and it's, on, it's the same on both sides. So each piece 
is sort of each strap is designed to give support and relieve tension off the other straps. So I think that's really amazing, really an ingenious design. Like I said, if you see this this handle here, it's supported by a rivet here, a rivet here, a strap here, which connects it to the shoulder straps, which connects to this center an anchor here. I hope I'm doing a good job uh, describing all this. And then this, this strap here that is also riveted. This strap is the enclosure strap. So this is a roll top backpack. Yeah, I'll show how that works. So, so what we do here is, you know, obviously the bag opens up. And so how you close it is you roll it and then you use this enclosure strap right here with the buckle here. You can close that up, buckle it up, close it. And what's cool about the roll top is this roll top makes it so basically nothing on the inside of the bag gets wet. And trust me when I say this, this heavily waxed, heavily oiled Chrome Excel is virtually waterproof. It doesn't let any water in. It's amazing. It's an amazing leather. It's highly, highly treated. Like I said, I haven't treated it once with anything. I've just let it be. I've just let it, you know, expose itself to the elements. Um, I am not gentle on this bag. I throw it on the ground. I throw it on rocks. I hang it from trees. Like I said, I took it on, I took it, I take it traveling. It's like my traveling backpack. I'll throw my laptop in here. I'll throw some boot, some spare boots in here. I'll throw a spare outfit in here. It's a very large capacity backpack. It really lets me tote around a lot of stuff. And the only thing that's ever gone wrong with it is one of the rivets came off at the base of the left strap. And so what I did is I have, I have like a button kit that I got off Amazon and I affixed a, uh, like a button to the inside of the bag and to this strap so that, you know, because there were two rivets here and there only remained one and I didn't want to put all that tension on that one rivet. And so what I did is I installed a button here and the button kept coming undone and it was kind of a waste. So I brought it to my cobbler, Sonny, and he took a look at it and all he, he just took a hammer and hammered that shut and now the button hasn't opened since then. <laughs> so it totally, the button sort of works like a rivet now. It's kind of neat. I don't know how he knew how to do that, but he did it. And then I also customized, see, because here at the end of these straps, I had to actually, these straps, they, they unravel and it's kind of annoying. So they're kind of loose and flopping around. And so I figured instead of like cutting them and trying to do something so permanent as snipping it off, I just, I finagled a little system where I have like these little bead chains and then I have these little like carabiner hook type things. And so what I did is I just finagled a little, a little contraption to sort of keep it, keep this rolled up as well as to keep it from flopping around. So that's, that, that kind of accomplishes both tasks there. So that's my own little personal modification. And not to mention the ball chain leaves like a cool indent on the, on the Essex leather here. So yeah, this is just, it's just something I did. It's just something I, I messed around with and, and figured out how to do on my own. I, I like, I like doing little non-permanent changes like that, especially if it's going to improve the, uh, the overall ergonomics of the bag. So, but yeah, we've got all solid brass hardware, all genuine leather from Horween, which is, like I said, it's nearly impossible to find a bag made of Horween leathers. And if you guys know of any place that also can do custom bags like this, please let me know because I kind of wanted to, after I had this for a while, USA Handcraft Leather, they did the reverse bag which was essentially the body was Essex and all the components were brown Chrome Excel. That was really cool too. So I kind of wanted to get the, the opposite bag. Unfortunately, again, she closed down her shop and I don't know whatever happened to her, but yeah. So what's cool here is this enclosure strap here on the in, inside is very hairy. It's got like a rough out texture going on here. And then the, the only thing, the only thing that I would change about this backpack actually is the fact that this outer pocket isn't like its own compartment. It's actually just a piece of leather just sort of stitched to the outside of the bag. And so I actually can't fit much in this. Like it's actually kind of just 
it's actually just kind of like a flat pocket, almost like a pants pocket, instead of being like a cargo po pocket that's it's full, a full external slot. This isn't like that. Like you could fit some things in here, like some papers or some, or some headphones or something, but you can't. I wouldn't feel secure putting like something big in there. That's what the that's what the main body of the bag is for. So, so yeah, let's check out the inside of inside of the bag now. As soon as you open it, you have this really cool leather lining around the the opening. And then on the inside, what's really cool is there's there are two slots. There, I'll, I'll show what I mean in the video. There's a there's a front slot and there's a back slot. I assume to protect like a laptop or something. And then on the inside here, it's got this really cool like decorative. I'm not sure what function it serves other than the fact that it's decorative and it's indicative and it signals that there are two separate sections on the inside, a front and a back. And so this is also Essex leather. What do I have in there? Yeah, I, have, I just have a bunch of EDC gear in there. This is my Zippo. Always good to have flames. And then I also have, this is my beloved Douglas Field lighter. This one's in stainless steel beautiful I think this one's actually called like diamond steel or something I don't know but it's a really light really bright really shiny silvery stainless steel I love it then I got a couple pens a brass pen a stainless steel pen in there another feature that it has is there's an inside pocket again it's not like its own compartment it's more like kind of like a superficial compartment, kind of like the outside. It's like, it's a pocket, it's not like a compartment. So, so similar to that, yeah. So you could, I usually throw my pens in there and here I have my, my copper lighter, <laughs> my copper EDC lighter from Raylight, my favorite flashlight currently. So the in, inside pocket is also very nice Essex leather. The interior is lined with a cotton canvassing. I believe it's like a wax cotton canvassing. So it's not just, it's not just leather on the inside. So, and, and, you know, talking to Phil at Ashland Leather, he, he said this, he said that, you know, not all leathers are ideal for all purposes. So like there's some leathers that are ideal for boots, some leathers that are ideal for bags. I guess Chrome Excel probably isn't considered a very good leather for bags, but I disagree. I'm a Chrome Excel freak. I'm a Horween freak. I want all my stuff made out of Horween leather. And so that's why I kind of feel like regardless of like whether or not it would make an ideal bag leather, and I do agree to a certain point, it's not the ideal bag leather. I still want it in a bag because I love it. And I, I find Chrome Excel to be very special and it's a new way to experience leather, essentially. Um, you know, because experiencing a leather in a boot is different from experiencing it in a wallet. It's different from experiencing it in a watch strap, it's different from experiencing it in a bag, for example. So, so I feel like um, experiencing a leather in a bag is like a, adds a whole new level of experience, like truly, because you carry stuff around in it. You know, with the boots you walk in it, obviously, with the wallet you carry your cards and your bills in it, but in a bag you actually get to carry like your things in it. You actually, and and you could take it on trips, and and you could you could shove it underneath your your air the the seat in front of you on the airplane and not to mention like all kinds of crazy things happen to it like for example down here at the bottom here this is the area that comes in contact with my denim my indigo and so there's some really cool indigo crocking that has happened across here that's absorbed into the essex bottom here and then uh and then what else is really cool is along the back there's like really cool grain especially down here and it almost looks like, it looks like loose grain or wrinkles from the cow's skin. Now this is a large surface, so you're getting like a full large cuts of the hide here. So it really shows a lot of the natural character of the leather that you're not gonna get in a boot. Like in a boot, you're getting a smaller sample, smaller cuts of the leather, and they can more easily manipulate and, and decide and differentiate between which pieces they wanna include in the, in the boot and which pieces they don't. Here, they didn't have that luxury. Here, they actually had to include all of it. To, you know, like obviously, 
to get a section this large, they had to cut a big freaking chunk out of the leather there to include. So, so there's a lot of really, really just amazing character on here. And actually, I just realized too that I love it when this happens, when you wear through some of the stitching, there's a couple stitches missing here. That's awesome. One thing that happened to me early on with this bag is I'm kind of a health freak and I carry around different elixirs and oils and supplements and things. I used to carry around neem oil. It was a neem mint oil blend and I carried it right in here and it spilled. It, like the cap wasn't a very good quality cap and the cap came loose and then and the neem oil just the whole thing just leaked out here and so you can still see remnants of that and it still kind of has like a minty fresh smell about it. It's taken a while to uh to to get out. I actually I used a lot of cloths, a lot of napkins to sort of press and try to get that oil out. I got most of it out and more of it has faded with time, but it's still very much left a mark there. <laughs> and then yeah, all along the the back of it, there's just really cool scratches. And then also I did a uh, a demonstration where you can see the pull-up effect in the Chrome XL. You can see it really dramatically in this bag here, much more than you'll be able to see in a boot because, you know, the boot is shaped a certain way. You don't necessarily want to uh, create that pull-up effect so dramatically on a boot as the way that I did on this bag. So you get to really see some cool pull-up, like some, you could make it basically a whole line going down the body of it. And then, you know, what's cool about that is the oils shift out and then over time they just shift back in and it covers it up. You know, like they say, Chrome XL is like a self self healing leather. So that's my three year update. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to add because yeah, I just, I have so much fun with this bag and I really wish there was more of a variety of bags out there. Honestly, like I'm always looking for leather, new leather backpacks that are like just seriously all leather, you know, like sometimes I'll see like, yeah, it's a leather backpack, but then they used cotton straps or yeah, it's a leather backpack, but then they use like some sort of synthetic nylon strap or like a hybrid leather nylon type thing for better breathability or whatever. Like, no, when, what I'm looking for in a leather backpack is a full on, straight up full on leather backpack. Like I want leather everything, brass rivets, brass hardware for the functionality, but you know, I'm not looking for cotton materials in, in my backpack. I want it full leather, you know? And I have to say like people, when I wear this thing, like it stops people in their tracks. I remember on the first day that I wore this, like I was, I just walked down the street and people were like, oh my God, that thing is amazing. What, what is that? Like they don't know what quite to make of it. And you know, so for, for a while there, I was, I was nicknaming this backpack, my, <laughs> my indie backpack, kind of like, um, because I imagine like Harrison Ford would have wanted to carry this, this bag as Indiana Jones, if, if it existed at the time, or it's also similar to like the Viberg service boot of backpacks. It's like, <laughs> it's like the the service backpack, if you want to think of it like that. Um, so yeah, so I assume, again, I assume the reason why there aren't as many leather backpacks out there as there are is because just cotton is easier to deal with and nylon is easier to produce and, you know, it's it's cheaper and it's easier to replace. I don't know, but, but frankly, I'd like to see more. I'd like to see more all leather bags. And I think that you know, if somebody else doesn't step up eventually, I might have to. <laughs> I mean, how hard can it be? I mean, you just gotta cut, cut the leather and stitch it together and do some riveting and, you know, honestly, how, how difficult can it be? Well, it's probably pretty difficult, but <laughs> anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I hope I did this bag justice this time. Like I said, I want, when I do a video on this, I want to make sure I get it right. But yes, this bag has followed me everywhere, accompanied me everywhere for the past three years. Whenever I take a trip, this is the this is the bag I'm, I bring along, and uh, it has served me well. And I'd love to get another one of equal or better value. I just, uh, you know, I just like I said, there's there's not many options out there. So, anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. What do you think of this bag? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And anyways, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see y'all in my next video.